This little device here is Tesla's USB flash drive that I have placed thousands of music files on to listen to it in my Tesla. If you own a newer Tesla, there is a high chance this will not work in your car, specifically anywhere in the center console that allows a USB to plug in. Stick around. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, one, why it does not work in the center console, and two, what we can do to get it fixed and working properly for you guys. Welcome back, automotive fanatics. It's Peter, your automotive fanatic, coming at you with a solution on one of the most common problems with the newer Teslas. Those of you who are new to my channel, thank you so much for dropping by. Please consider subscribing as it helps me uh, continue to create content for you guys to check out as well as DIYs like today. Earlier, I had alluded to reasons why this little flash device will not work in your Tesla. Again, for newer Teslas, they had or they ran into chip shortages where the center console houses a little connection device that allows older Tesla vehicles to read and play data off of their USB. With the newer vehicles, the center console no longer allows you to play data through the USB and it's because of the chip shortage. This is where I introduce you guys to T-Parts. T-Parts is a local vendor that uh, is in Orange County and I was lucky enough to run into them at one of the Tesla meets and I talked to them. They sell a ton of stuff for Teslas as well as being a huge supporter for the local Tesla community. Now, what I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys today is specifically the center console data module that uh, T-Part sells. This here is the device that you need to install into your center console to allow uh, you to be able to play music through the USB. And it also allows you guys that like to uh, play games on your Tesla, you can hook up your wireless controllers right into their center console. What is included with the center console data module is they give you some tools. And if we take a look here, you have the module unit right here. And T-Part also gives you this little device to help you pull off the center uh, console that everything is attached to. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do today is the DIY. Now, if you are lucky enough, you will actually have the data cable that is stashed inside uh, the center console. You, have, you literally have to open it, untape it, and you can connect it right up, which is going to be easy. Now for newer models like my Performance Y that was made in June of this year, that cable exists. However, there is no connection cable that connects uh, the center console to the ECU itself. And that is an extra part that you need to pick up. So it's probably about a three foot cable uh, T-Part does include that with your data module. So we'll talk about that and I'll show you exactly what we will do to get everything installed. So without further ado, my friends, let's go ahead and tackle this project. 
Here is going to be where the data port resides, and it's the front storage area. Uh, here is the tool that T-Parts gives you, and what you want to do is you want to put it in like this, and latch it so that this side catches on the ledge, and you want to pull with a little force. Um, nothing's going to break. Just like that. And now you'll see that it's held in by a few clips. All right. So this one here will just essentially put right back in. Sometimes they do come out. And here is the data module itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply unplug it. Like such. Some of you may see this cable here. This is going to be your USB port connection and that will go into the new unit. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you at this point what you need to do. Here we have the old data port. This is the tool that T-Parts gives you and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove these little star bits here. Okay, we're going to pull this one out. This is the, the original Tesla. This is going to be the new one from T-Parts. And if you take a look at the Tesla one, this slot here is completely empty and that was reserved for the USB connection. Since the chip inside doesn't exist, they block it off. So we'll put that aside. Here is the new part from T-Parts and you can see the data USB connection right in there. And all we're going to do is we're just going to simply replace this. I went and showed you guys how to remove the data port and we went ahead and swapped it. Now, what I wanted to add here is because there's only two connections, it's limited to what you can connect. So I went ahead and purchased the T-Parts uh, USB hub. This is a really nice setup here. And all it will do is it just connects like such here, show you guys, like that. So now you've got um, two data ports, you have a 3.0 um, quick charger and then you have a PD charger which is a really strong charging setup. So now that we have this here we're gonna go ahead and essentially connect the power as well as the USB um, cable here. Now for those of you who are lucky enough once you connect it put in a flash drive and see if it works. If you are lucky it works. If you are unlucky, like me, it is not going to work because from the cable that connects here, it's essentially, I will say, cut off from the main ECU itself. So that's why T-Parts does give you that long extension cable and we have to open up the panel to get to it to make that connection. So we'll go ahead and do that next part now. Now we are underneath the glove box. You need to remove this panel. Now there's going to be one, two, three, four different plastic rivets that you use uh, this tool here that they include in the kit. And all you really do is you just put it in here and pop this one out like such, just like that. There's three, and the fourth one here. Okay, 
Now this piece here is going to come off. There's going to be two additional connections. One is going to be to your ambient lighting, which you un simply unplug. The other one's to the little speaker. And let's see if I can find, find it here. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and set it aside. Now we're gonna shift our focus over to this little panel here. You will need to loosen this and it's, it's going to be pretty simple to do. You just got to get your hands in here and pull, pull this panel out. To make my life a little easier, I took a prying tool and just put it in here. And what that does is it allowed me to essentially put my fingers in there so that I can pull this off. All right, so now with this off, uh, it's gonna be a little difficult for you guys to see without removing this whole um, panel here, but let's see if I can show you what's under inside here. Okay, so we're gonna move over here. All right, so this is the panel that you have to remove. It's just held by all these plastic clips. And this right here that you see, that is going to be your connection that goes from here over to the center console. And this wire here is the USB uh, adapting cable or extension cable that T-Parts gives you. I had pulled this panel off earlier just to kind of study the nomenclature. But what you want to do is you want to essentially um, pull this off like such. And here is the connection right here. Connect the extension cable here and you're going to kind of run it up here. We're going to go underneath here so that you guys can see. All right, so this right here, that is your USB connection. So my recommendation is to go ahead, connect the cable right into here, and you're going to test it to make sure you have uh, data. As you can see, I went ahead and tested with a uh, USB cable. And all we did here was going here, I went to the radio, I just clicked on radio, and there is my USB data port down here. We're just going to click on that and turn the music up a little. All right. Okay. So it definitely seems to work, which is great. We'll go ahead and pause it. I'm going to disconnect this, make sure. And then as you can tell, I do not have the option of the USB anymore. We'll go ahead and pop it right back in, like such. And there is my radio, we'll click on it. There is Bluetooth. Okay. All right. Now that we have successfully installed T-Parts data module into the Tesla, I am very curious to know the percentage of Tesla owners that have that box working right out of uh, the get-go. And what I mean by that is just simply having that cable, installing it, and having it work. Newer Tesla owners like myself that recently 
received their Model Y, that cable was not connected at all to the vehicle's ECU. So that's why T-Parts gives you that extension. And I'd be willing to bet you it's going to be a good percentage of uh, owners that don't have it. So it's nice that it was included. It's a little more challenging to get behind that panel and to install it. But it's nice to have a data port now that works where I can listen uh, to my music through the USB. Uh, for myself, I don't use any type of controllers, but I know there are plenty of users out there that will plug it in and uh, they have access to their uh, controllers to play uh, video games on the Tesla. Now, as an alternative, I know that there are some users that are using the data port that is located inside the glove box, but in looking at Tesla's um, manual, they specify that it's not highly recommended. It still works, but again, not highly recommended, and they say use that for your Sentry's dash cams. Um, backup system. So it's really up to you guys if you want to do that or if you want to have that nice T-Parts uh, updated uh, data control module into uh, that center box there and then you can also hook up multiple items to it as well. As usual, my automotive fanatic family thank you so much for watching another DIY video as well as a product review on this one here. This is going to be Peter, your automotive fanatic, signing off. Until the very next time, my friends. <laughs>